study like uh, from the Miami game yesterday? Uh, I think not too much different than any other week uh, in terms of you always have little details that you wish you would have done better. Um, there's always some plays that you wish you could have back, but that's just the nature of our game. And I think we had a we had a good meeting, and we realized you know we got to play a lot better up front than we did against Miami, and uh, we have a great opportunity to do that this week against a really talented group of guys. Brian, coach mentioned we were asking him obviously about punting the ball away twice there in the fourth quarter. He asked us, of course, we could ask the offensive guys how they felt. How did you feel about not getting a chance to really go for it on that fourth and one, and then the fourth and ten later in the fourth quarter? Well, I mean, I think you got to put it on us up front. We had three opportunities to get it, uh, the first three plays, and uh, we didn't get that. Ju- we didn't get that done. And one of the things we emphasize is stay in our lane. And my lane is to execute the play that's called, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. And I don't really, I don't really get involved in should we have gone for it or should we haven't. Uh, I know I'm just going to go out and play hard every play, and I uh, just wish we would have done a better job up front to get us to not have that situation arise. And I think that's something we can learn from and try to do better next time is don't get there. Were you, were you a little at all upset you didn't get the ball this game after getting a couple touches the week before, all the two touchdowns on the year? And I know the broadcasters mentioned there was one play that you were lined up on the heavy side of the formation and the penalty was called and said, hey, you might have been getting the ball there. Were you expecting to get the ball at all in that game? Or no, uh, no. I, was, I wasn't expecting to get the ball, but uh, my job is to block. and. It's a job I take very seriously, and um, I was I was not expecting to get the ball. I'm not upset I didn't get the ball. I never expect to get the ball. Uh, I don't think any offensive linemen do, and I'm certainly not going to start to expect that. Um, I'm going to expect to have a great challenge every week, week in and week out, and I look forward to that challenge of blocking people every week. Your touch to your touch to touchdown ratio is pretty good. Uh, I guess so. Um, I just try to do what the coach t- what coach tells me to do, and he's uh, he's put me in some really good spots to make a play, uh, and that's something that I don't know is he needs to take a lot of credit for that. Is those plays were pretty wide open, so. What give you guys problems against Miami up front? Uh, I just I think the details once again, uh, maybe like a little bit of a different step, six inches in a step makes a bit, makes a world of a difference, and uh, I think that's something we probably lacked against Miami is a little bit smaller details and I think that comes with uh, increased focus of practice and um, just keep working through those little things. I mean Miami had a really talented group of defensive linemen and uh, we needed to play at our best and I'm pretty pretty safe in saying that that wasn't our best game up front and um, we've acknowledged that and we're looking forward to trying to getting back to playing our style of football and can't wait for it. When you're facing a defensive line with speed like theirs, can that kind of throw off those details a little bit and make you kind of overcompensate, maybe take a step up a little wide? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I'm not sure speed has anything to do with it. Uh, I think they came off the ball. They had a really good uh, first two steps, but it's more just playing confident and playing fast. And uh, I think that sometimes we were a little hesitant, but that's in the past, and we're over it, and we're looking forward to Clemson. Brian, of all the offensive coordinators you've worked with, is there anything unique that you'll remember about Matt Canada in terms of you know how he teaches the game or runs practice, anything like that? Well, I think the number one thing we should all acknowledge is I'm pretty sure this is the most points we've scored as an offense in terms of uh, the offensive coordinators we've had in the past. And uh, I don't worry about what other offensive coordinators we've had in the past. Uh, I worry about this one. and. He's a great coach, and uh, everybody respects him a lot, and we love playing for him. That's one thing I can say is guys love playing for him. Uh, he's a great guy and does a lot of creative stuff, and we've been successful, and we have uh, the utmost faith and trust in him that he's going to put together a great game plan and just going to try to execute it to the best of our ability. Is Clemson's uh, defensive line, uh, guy by go position by position, any special problem? I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call any anybody we play a special problem. Um, I don't know if that's the right term. They're very talented up front. Uh, number 42 is a great defensive end, and I'm really looking forward to that challenge. Um, I think problem is a is a bit of a wrong word, um, but they're very talented. They have some big guys up front, and they have some guys that can really move. 
Um, very talented guys, and what more could you ask for? I mean, if you're a competitor, you want to play against the best, and this is by far the best defensive line we've played against, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, I know the guys in our room are excited for it, and if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best, and I mean, I can't wait. Brian, you've been you're just talking a lot about you know, how long it's been here or whatever. I, mean, what's, what, I assume you've gone up against him in practice from time to time or during your career. Yeah. What makes him I mean, not the biggest dude out there? I mean, you think of defensive ends, you think of these big 6'5 edge rushers. What makes him so successful? I think his first two steps are phenomenal in terms of coming off the ball fast um, and causing problems in his first two steps. Um, and then also his leverage. I mean, when, he's, when you're worried about somebody running around the edge and you're trying to be a little bit lighter on your feet, then he can come at you and bull rush you and he's so low. Uh, that's something that presents me with troubles in practice is how low he can get. And he uses his height to his advantage. I mean, not many people would probably say that when looking at him, that height's an advantage for him. But I know he's said it before is he uses his height to his advantage and in terms of leverage. And I think he's great at using leverage and plays with great leverage. And that's how he's been so successful against guys. Is he, I mean, is he a, does he talk out there? Is he a, if he gets you on a play, does, it, does he let you know about it? Or is he one of those guys that's sort of quiet back in the huddle? And uh, well, he's the kind of guy that you know he's going to do his job every play. And his job is to get to the quarterback. So when he does that, it's he's act like he's been there before because he has. Um, and that's something that he doesn't talk a lot. He's more of a steady Eddie guy. And you heard him. He was talking about poise before. And he plays with a lot of poise. And um, I think a lot of that comes with maturity and how long he's been here. And you can't really get too high and get too low, as Coach Junk always says. So um, he's, good. he's good. He's great senior leadership. And he's, he's always calm, which is good to have. Um, it's something I've learned is it's better to be a little bit more calm than all jacked up all the time. And he's a steady Eddie guy. So. Brian, you spoke about how much points the offense has scored this year, probably more than any team in a long time, if not ever. And last week was the first team, I think, seven games that you didn't get over 36 points. It's just that 28. So do you have like a number of how much you think you guys might need to go against Clemson, probably the best team you've played this year, how many points you guys need to beat them? Well, if you look at it, uh, our offense really only scored 21 points. It's Miami, uh, just because Quadri had a great run on special teams, and that's something we we were a little bit a little bit disappointed with, is the the points um, against Miami. But no, um, we have goals that we set for every game, and I don't think that very that changes very much. Um, but we know we're gonna have to score points. You always have to score points, but uh, no, nah, I think we have our goals internally of how many points we want to score each week and. That should, that stays the same. So, you guys kind of have like the one game at a time, one game at a time mentality. But do you sense at all any more excitement from the players, either the younger guys like yourself or the veteran leaders, who have a chance to go out and handle the signature win, getting a chance to go up against such a great team that comes in? I mean, I think I think everyone's excited uh, to play one of the top two, three teams in the country right now, and there's no doubt about it. They are one of the top two teams in the country, and I think if you want to, if you want to be up here. And everybody can talk a big game and say where they want to be in three years or where the program wants to be in five years. Is This is a good benchmark this week coming up about where we are and how far off we are from being at that ultimate goal. And I couldn't, I, can't, I know our guys in the line room couldn't be more excited to see how we play against the best. Right, in the last couple of games, you guys slow start on offense. Both games, I think you really get the ball for you know, almost six or seven minutes. Is that kind of effect you think? I mean, standing on the sideline, waiting to get out there? No. Um, I think it's actually almost sometimes a blessing in disguise. I mean, I know your pregame emotions are sometimes jacked up and you're ready to go, but you kind of get a feel for how things are going, um, how the speed of the game is playing, and just little things like that. You kind of get the sense of how things are how things are moving for you, and you know you can either keep the momentum rolling or try to stop the momentum against you and try to get it going our direction. I mean, I just take everything one play at a time. And if we play the first play or seven minutes into the game, it doesn't really matter. You said you used to work problems in long word you used going against Clemson. Is that a good mindset to have? Could it lead to good things because you don't consider it a big problem? Uh, I don't know. I would consider it more of an opportunity. Um, I don't know if we've had an opportunity to play against guys this talented and a defense that's this good in a long time. 
Um, so it's more of an opportunity to do something really special on Saturday, but that comes with we got to have a great week of practice this week, uh, our best week of practice because we're playing the best team we faced. And um, uh, I would I would emphasize it's it's an opportunity. Uh, I think everyone has acknowledged that.